Welcome to another episode of 72 Print Connector. With us today, we have Adam. Hey, hello. Josh. Hello. And myself, finally back, Eric. Welcome back, Eric. Hey, hey Eric, what's going on? It's nice to have you back. It was a long <laughs> two weeks. I will say that for damn sure. So you Eric. came back and we lost another. I think we're just going to start trading off. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, see, I'll leave next if you want, and we'll find yeah, and Tom can join in next. Time. See, if I understood right, the board reconvened, and realized <laughs> that they weren't getting the earnings still, so they decided a new experiment was fuck Tom. Let's see, bringing Eric back helps. One of these days we'll get this shit right, but until then, this is the cast you got for this week. Um, yeah. But in all honesty, Tom is a little preoccupied this weekend. Um, still some hangover from the move, some stuff he had to take care of. So once he gets that all taken care of, we will be back to possibly a four man, three man, other group. But everyone will be back <laughs> and we'll just start winging the shit from there. Yeah. But, how have you guys Sounds been this good. week Been doing some good shit? Yeah, this week has been about the same as last week. Pretty easy. Um, the project we're working on at work has been wrapping up more or less, so it's been pretty easy. And I will take easy days every day if I could. <laughs> <laughs> easy is good. How about you? It's it's been really quiet, really easy. I'm actually uh, mm. for the next month I'll be home alone, so super quiet doing the bachelor life of. Work, beer, video games, sleep. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. That, that's uh, I like three of those things a lot. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind the work thing too much. I, I enjoy the people I'm around, which helps. That's good. Yeah, um, that's real good. What sucks is I wanted to get fishing involved, but most of my uh, fishing shit uh, is still in Ohio and hasn't been shipped back yet. Really? Oh, Why? Wow. Why? You've been out there for quite some time now. No, 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 no. I shipped it back to Ohio for this last trip I was on. Oh, gotcha. And I was Jesus. driving a car that couldn't like handle all the shit I had. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't get it back to <laughs> FedEx. So um, some family's taking care of that for me and I'll hopefully have it in the next few weeks. You would pack well for a trip, I guess. Or yeah. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> well, you I mean, don't pack well? I don't know. Either way, you pack a lot for trips. Yeah, let's just put it um, this way. I had 50 pounds worth of equipment that I couldn't bring in my fucking flight. So I had to FedEx it <laughs> and then all my poles. Yeah, you, Josh, Josh, you might not know this about Eric, but he is the most fisherman, fisherman guy. This, this gentleman has created his own lures to use. Oh yeah. He's them really, hands. really deep in, like definitely just, all in on the fishing, uh, on the fishing. Yeah. Wagons. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah. I'm an unbalanced that individual. He, he watches it on yeah. TV. Oh, you watch it. That's I like watch the tournaments. <laughs> that's <excru> <laughs> that's excruciating. For the well, record, I mean, like, you watch golf, so I mean, that's fair, right? I'm not alone. <laughs> Dobby is out here, one of the fans of 72 and one of our mods. He is also a fellow fisherman who will watch the tournaments. So fuck y'all. I'm not alone. <laughs> I had, honestly, I had a friend, uh, a friend that did that did the tournaments he did tournaments for years and he got really good at him he did quite well but i don't think he fishes any that as much anymore oh, yeah really? anyway yeah Sweet. but anywho yeah so um my week's been <laughs> super um light easy uh what about you josh how's your week been pretty good getting geared up for rlcs got to clean the house make sure dad doesn't think, think we're a slob <laughs> so, so we're getting geared up for that we have uh usually pretty busy um just just really really good so far just kind of gearing up at work getting really into what's going on so intense so far <laughs> yeah how far away is that now another month no no, no it's, it's like ne it's West. not next weekend but the week after yeah oh right. no shit Yep. Yeah, so Adam, less, oh, less than two weeks from today. Yes, he will be is starting. Yeah, we'll, we'll be sharing a room shortly. <laughs> That'll be fantastic. You guys going to be sharing a room. You guys going to be getting some uh, 72 PC film on there. 
Yes, absolutely. Yes. In our, in our room. I'm going to take a lot of video. Yeah. Oh, hold on. No, 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 no. Not in the room. We don't want oh, the fucking bedroom oh, videos oh, for some oh, okay. oh, Sorry, channel. sorry, sorry. Oh, excuse me. I mean. <laughs> no, no, no. Wrong no, cast. No, wrong no. podcast for that. Oh, wrong. Okay. Uh, never mind. Okay. Just forget I said anything. Um, no, it's going to be great. We're going we're gonna to meet a lot of friends down there. We're really excited. Um, we've been kind of accumulating friends from all over the place for uh, as far as Rocket League is concerned. So it's the, like the first season we went. Uh, it was just me and my wife and we went, it was great. It was super cool. Uh, but it wasn't like, we didn't know anyone. So we we're just kind of wandering around aimlessly. But, um, this time, this time through, we're going to have a ton of people coming and hanging out. It's going to be great. That's awesome. So, Definitely. Right. Always, yeah. So that's pretty cool. We always talked about the fly doing, though. We always talked about doing the Dota thing, but we never ended up actually doing it. But now that we're out here, we're hoping to nice Hold Dota on. thing. Yeah, they have the international out here in Seattle. Oh, which is okay. a huge, like huge, huge tournament. Oh, oh. nice. Also, oh, hold I, on. I want to rewind uh, real quick. Yeah, Adam, you're afraid of flying? No. Oh, yeah. I absolutely love flying. I am afraid of missing my flight and being lost at the airport. Oh, oh. okay, okay. <laughs> right, do you have? I, a, I love flying. I, I will stare out the window the whole time. It's amazing. I love it. <laughs> But it's the everything in between walking into the airport and getting on that plane. I am completely clueless and I hate being completely clueless. <laughs> <laughs> you walk in, you look at the gate, you go straight to your gate and then you venture off if you want. Unless you're landing yeah, in LA, well, so in which case you're sprinting in some well, random direction. Hoping yeah. for the best. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to have layovers and stuff and I know that um, I'm going to I'm gonna have to go from like terminal to terminal at Chicago uh, airport. Chicago oh, okay. is big. I just did that last week. How much yeah. time did you give yourself? Uh, well, I mean, I just bought the cheapest flight I could, which gives me an hour and a half if nothing delayed. Oh, you're fine. You're fine. If you're not delayed, you are fine with that. But if it delays, <laughs> <laughs> that's the part that scares me. <laughs> It'll be fine. Yeah. Either way, you'll, you we will get uh, videos out of everything. We will, our friend yeah. Nathan is going to be joining us. That'll be fantastic. Um, it's, it's going to be a really good time. So getting geared up for that, that's been a lot. We're trying to orchestrate something really big for when, uh, Adam gets here with all of our friends so that he's uh, overwhelmed and doesn't know what to do. That's the, that's the goal. It's perfect. <laughs> so awesome. that'll, that'll be fantastic. Tom pulls up a good point. Adam, are you paying yep. not to sit in fight club? Or are you going to bring your box? <laughs> oh <laughs> God. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm bringing boxing gloves on my carry on just in case. Okay. Okay. Gearing up. I've been training for weeks now, ready. so I should be ready by the time flight rolls around. Gonna yeah, go rocky on them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Definitely. That's, that's the plan. That's the. Yeah. <laughs> I the tiger's been on loop since three weeks ago. It's catching those flying. chickens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> catching those chickens. Uh, oh man! But good to hear you had a pretty nice week, and also mm-hmm. awesome to hear you guys are getting pumped up for the um, RLCS. Yes, you will be getting your shirts soon. Uh, I need to send those out, but you'll get them very soon. <laughs> Don't you steal my fucking money? <laughs> <laughs> it's mine now. <laughs> it's a shame. They, the were, they were never shirts. <laughs> they were never shirts to begin with. Josh is the ultimate ice the master. Ultimate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, ice master. I got, got uh, 40 bucks from you guys. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, Adam, video games. Have you done much gaming this week? Is the question. I've done a decent amount of gaming, but I haven't done a decent amount of games. So it's been the regulars. And everybody knows what the regulars are. In case <laughs> there are somehow some new people listening, uh, <laughs> Rocket League and Battlegrounds have been taking up a lot of my time. And I've uh, been having a lot of fun with that. Those but I did, yeah, I, did, I did play one other game, but I didn't get too much into it yet. But Titan Souls. Mm. Um, if anybody has an Amazon, so have a Twitch Prime account that you can have, and Titan Souls is free for the next, I think, few days or so. So you can get that through Twitch for free, you know, and you can keep it forever, but you have to redeem that within a few days. Yeah, they uh, are totally trying to build that platform up by giving out free mm-hmm. games. Yeah, which is cool. I, I like to see that for sure, and well, I'm not going mean, to argue against free games. Exactly. Titan Souls, especially, was one of the ones, like, if you went through, like, a list of, 
the ones to watch that was always on that list for some reason and so, so it's got to be at least decent in some yeah. in some regard there's a there's quite a few of them so i'm really excited about that uh mm-hmm. you're gonna dive in for sure yeah um i played through like the first couple of bosses so anybody that's not familiar with titan souls um if you're familiar with shadow of the colossus there's there's some parallels there um it's mostly well I, as far as i know it's all boss battles so you 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 know you go from area to area fighting these bosses and each boss has a unique you know there's like a puzzle aspect to it where you have to figure out how to hurt the boss and then you have to actually execute that that move onto the boss um so there's definitely dark um not dark souls shadow of the colossus in that regard and then i think there's a lot of difficulty as well so um it's, from what i understand it's a very hard game going to be lots of dying and lots of frustration <laughs> <laughs> that's exciting i have found yeah, myself attracted to it. those type of games lately i don't yeah. know why i'm not masochistic i don't think anyway well yeah but <laughs> it's got kind of the the meat boy effect it's it's right. very difficult but you want to you want to keep going and you finally get it and you're like yes i, I did this thing now we can do the next one <laughs> i say is it small enough chunks where the difficulty doesn't set you back a lot and it just makes you sit a long time at one small spot um, I mean, it's literally you're walking from area to area fighting bosses. So it if you die, you just it. fight the boss again. It's not like there's okay. Oh, much, it's that much like Shadow right. At a, at it's a literally, glance, yeah. Okay. At a glance, it looks a lot like uh, Monster Hunter. So like you'd have like what, there's like one guy you have to deal with, and you have to figure out how to deal with them. And then when you're done dealing with them, then you're done, and you move on to the next guy that you have to figure out how to deal with. Mm-hmm. So it's a lot like that in in one way or another. <laughs> at least that's what yeah. it looks like. You're a yeah. Monster Hunter guy, Josh. Oh, dude, Monster Hunter's my thing. Me and uh, <laughs> me and Shane used to play that one a, a lot, pretty much every single day. Got really, really into it, and then never played it again. <laughs> no. I played a yeah, lot. So we of get, try. That happens with games. So I played a whole right. lot of Try, but then I bought Generations and just haven't put the time in it like I thought I would. Well, right now we're waiting on Dauntless. We're pretty excited for that one. Hopefully, it's as good as it seems. Um, Dauntless is. It seems like monster hunter it is just monster hunter like a next gen monster hunter that you know from a different developer so we're we're, we're, our fingers crossed we don't know a lot about it um the trailer for it looks dumb (laughs) when like i first saw (laughs) it it looks awful well i saw it initially okay so like i saw the non-gameplay trailer for it and it looked awful and i didn't even i did i was like oh okay whatever i moved on and then uh shane brought it up to me again he's like hey are you looking at dauntless i'm like okay i'll look at it again let's see and i saw a gameplay of it of it i'm like oh my god this looks amazing because the gameplay actually looks really fun so we'll see so it's it's a 50 50 on and that's pretty good as far as games are concerned for me i'm fairly cynical when it comes to games (laughs) 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 but from what i've played so far it seems cool um, I like the the art style. It's that kind of retro, pixely, top down view like Zelda. Uh, but the pixel art seems really cool. Um, it's got some non pixel ish stuff in it. I think at some point there's a little bit of 3D or something. I'm not sure how that all works. I'm not too far into it. But I, I seem to remember seeing a screenshot. It kind of reminded me of like. Uh, like Futurama, how it's a cartoon, but then there's those, those shots of the ship and like CGI, 3D, whatever. <laughs> so I'm kind of I'm kind of worried about that a little bit, but I haven't, I haven't like I said, I haven't gotten to that yet. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited exciting. to keep playing through it. I'm, I'm definitely excited. I'll probably end up downloading it tonight if for no other reason, just to have it in case I want to try it later. Yeah, definitely. No reason not to. It's free. Free is free. Free, free, you have free. free is for, the best price for anyone who has who doesn't know yet this this you do have to download the twitch app which is actually yeah. kind of weird it's more of a, it's uh, like a launcher chat, yeah it's like a chatting client and it's, it kind of it's kind of like a little mini steam so i found it really strange that you can't use um twitch itself through the twitch app maybe that's something that you're gonna see later on but yeah the app just, is, a, just a heads up the app is still in a beta state and um it's just like I said, it's in its infancy, and it seems like they're trying to combat Steam, possibly. And I think mm. once they integrate the streaming features, I think it will stand a chance. I mean, with Maybe. the streaming aspect of it, yeah, I'd say so. I mean, it, it, it would be nice to have a, a nice little handy application to 
to watch it through because sometimes I don't want to watch it through Chrome or whatever. Well, just mm-hmm. imagine being able to launch your game and then click a button to stream. No obs, no anything. It's all right there in the same platform. As a streamer, oh, nice. that's awesome. Oh, are they actually trying to integrate like a no? I'm just streaming I'm dreaming program into on what it. This or? Could be. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to launch I games see. and you're a streaming platform, right. I mean, it's a natural. I wasn't marriage. sure what all goals they had for that. Right. I mean, even if it does well, you're not going to pull people off of Steam necessarily. Oh no way! And if they do, that's a huge like that's way in the future. But that's a beast. We yeah. just need something to compete with Steam, even if it doesn't beat it. Just bring in some new ideas to help get Steam to bring in some fresh stuff. Right. Without competition, things yeah. can grow stale. I mean, you, it has that's competition, true. that's for sure. I mean, you have, I mean, it has you play, you <laughs> have, have good no, 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 competition. No, no, no. Okay, it, has, it, has, <laughs> it has a lot of publisher based competition. Publisher based can never compete with Steam. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. you also, no, there is also the, um, what's Galaxy. the indie platform? There's an indie platform for just for like indie games. Um, and there's, mm-hmm. there's that one. You'd barely ever see it. Um, and then there's, yeah, there's a number of them out there. It's just unfortunate that, uh, the steam has a monopoly over everything for, as far as that's mm-hmm. concerned, most people are going to use steam. None of them have the power where Twitch has right. Amazon. So if they wanted to, and Amazon, from what I understand has a little that's bit it. of power. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, <laughs> they've got, they've got just a little power. What do right. just said in, in chat is gog. They just um, right. updated uh galaxies, what they're calling their uh, platform. Oh, really? Right. Okay. okay. So yeah, you have GOG and then I think, uh, um, like green man gaming, humble bundle, but those yeah, aren't right. like launchers those aren't those are stores. Yeah. Right. And it's I, the one Tom brought up, I don't see too much, but GOG, the galaxy one is, I think going to be the next possible thing to compete because a lot of people right. know GOG and like GOG. If they can actually keep up what they're doing on their storefront and get matchmaking and some small light stuff like, um, Steam has, I think they can compete. Hmm. People like GOG. People like DRM free. Yeah. That's true. Well, anyway, that was a nice little tangent. Adam, was there anything else? <laughs> yeah, so, huh? Was there anything well, else Eric, that you played, you... sir? No, that's pretty much it this week. Just Titan Souls, Raga League, Battlegrounds. How about yourself? Okay. Have you gotten into much this week? Well, for the past three weeks, I've had a decent amount. Um, so the last the week. three weeks, yeah. The last couple of weeks has been um, Rocket League and um, Battlegrounds. Same old. Um, got another win in Battlegrounds. It was one of the most impressive uh, wins I've been a part of. <laughs> a four-man squad being the last four standing. It was a perfect oh, wow. run. <laughs> nice. That's impressive. Was uh, pretty ha- happy about that. But on stuff not normal, um, I know you guys hit on Mario Kart a little last week with Tom. Mm-hmm. Um. I played a fuck ton of this. So this (laughs) released right before we started flying out for Ohio. So I actually got to test some of the features of the switch. So we're in the plane. I put down my tray. I prop open the kickstand, sit that some bitch down. I hand Gina a set of joy cons. I take a set of joy cons and we're doing split screen Mario Kart on the airplane. That's nice. It worked great. That's great. You are the target uh, demographic for the switch. Yeah. How long the, did the battery like, last? We made all the stuff exactly so these people can do this on the airplane. Right, right. The battery never died on us. It has like a three hour battery life, but what, keep in mm-hmm. mind, I'm not a dummy. I had a power bank with me. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So whenever we both sense. weren't playing, one of us was plugged in in playing. Okay. 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 So how long was your flight total? Uh, it was a almost four hour and a three hour. Oh, mm-hmm. phew. That's really good. I know that yeah, even with solid. the laptop I had, I was playing. Um, what was I playing? I was playing a bunch of pixel games uh, on my flight just to New Orleans, and my laptop died halfway through it. I couldn't oh, do no. it. Uh, well, I was see, playing Undertale. I was trying to finish Undertale, nice. and uh, it just died on that. I couldn't. I couldn't make the entire flight on that laptop playing Undertale. Yeah, with laptops, you're going to have the issue with you don't have power bank options where with right, the Switch, yeah. an actual like phone power bank, we had cu- two nice size ones. So oh, we, nice. weren't, we weren't going to run out. <laughs> Fuck that. Oh, awesome. that's great. Okay, that's fantastic. And um, so also, I had a wedding that was up in BFE. I had to drive like three hours to get there. So mm-hmm. we're not coming home after the wedding. So we stay in a motel. Right. Everyone from the wedding's there. We're having a good time. 
um, we're back in my room, a couple, it was Gina, I, and one of my other friends. And I was like, mm-hmm. hey, you, ever, you played the Switch. He's like, no. So what we do is we prop it up, put it on the dresser, and three of us are split-screening Mario Kart. Two wow. of us using a split Joy-Con config and one with the standard. Worked That's great. lawless. It, uh, when I saw the commercials, again, I, I, we reiterate this, uh, I think... Th- this is a to reiterate last time when uh, I saw the commercials, all like the hipsters bringing their switch around to all the parties and events like, Oh, look at the switch. And like, that'll never happen. Like there's no way that someone's going to go out and play their game with all their friends in like a random park or something. But like every time I hear, it's like, Oh, I've got the switch. I was playing it in the middle of Disneyland. Like <laughs> <are you> serious. <laughs> you actually went out and did what the commercial said. You're in. Got to get your money's worth. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> The full commercial as advertised uh, uh, experience, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. so cool, though, Eric. It was really fun. And skill, of course, we're drunk as shit. And uh, the one guy and I both had the small square screens. And it was funny because we played a lot. So it was always one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then mm-hmm. you could tell when he started to get drunk because it went <laughs> yeah. one, two, four, one, two, six, one, two, ten. <laughs> like, yeah, okay, the alcohol is taking effect. <laughs> Did yep. you do that? Did you do the Mario Kart drinking game? No, 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 no. Oh no. god, that one's that my just, favorite. That sounds like a bad time. <laughs> for anyone that doesn't know what the Mario Kart drinking game is, is you. So you have whatever you're drinking next to you, and you start the race. And now you can't drink and drive, so you have to pull over, and 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 take sips and then drive. So, so you could choose to just not start and just chug your whole drink right there, or you can like stop like lap for lap or however you want to do it but by the end of it you're just going to be messed up there's just no yeah. there's no you, two ways you can't about cross it. that last finish line until your drink is gone exactly so, so. <laughs> oh right, right there you go typically my favorite thing to do on that is you drink it all initially and then use the mario kart catch-up rule to your advantage oh that's a, oh, yeah that's a good idea that's a good point unless you turn ketchup off which is an option oh they do do that now you can do that. That is an option, and it is brutal if you're any good oh. at it. No one, no one will ever catch you. It's just not possible. Such so like, wow, you're hanging all the corners. Everyone's like, mm, yeah, that's just not happening. The I didn't know you could the so blue big. shells instead of them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I didn't exactly. know you could turn that off. You can. Yeah, there's a there's like a whole purist uh, mode you can do, like nice. turning like collision and everything off. It's pretty I was going to suggest a hardcore mode of that game where you just use Gran Turismo instead, but <laughs> <I> guess, uh, <laughs> you just play Gran Turismo. <laughs> <laughs> it's all realistic kart physics yeah. and stuff. Yeah. It's like, oh. <laughs> or Forza. You, you, I guess Forza would be a better example. You yeah, take well, a jump and like your suspension explodes. <laughs> You're like, oh, shit. Chug. <laughs> yeah, and then I had wow. one other game I actually played this morning. Um, everyone I play with is East Coast still. So when some guys mm-hmm. said they wanted to try out the new Rec Room mode at 9 a.m., I had to set a fucking alarm for 5.30 to be able to play with them. Jerks. Mm. But... <laughs> Rec Room is a free VR game. We've talked about it a lot. One of the best things going on VR platforms, Vive or um, Oculus. Mm-hmm. They have a new quest mode, which what it is, is everyone, there's different laser guns and you're picking it up and you're all working together to fight these robots off. And you're walking through this stage, different things, and you're dodging and you're ducking and you're throwing grenades and you're shooting them. It is so fucking good. It is the best experience I have ever had in VR. It is oh, wow. just really good. That's awesome. So like if you get that shot amazing. and you're down, it's just one hit, you're down. Your teammate can teleport over to you, give you a high five, and you're revived. You pick back up your gun and you go. Hmm. And for your hmm. guns, that like sick. you have a clip, you shoot, 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 and you have to manually pull back or cock the bolts or reload the clip on all these weapons. You have to do something to reload them after so many shots. Hmm. Hmm. And that sounds re- like a lot of fun. It's a teleport based uh, movement, but you also have oh, okay. your real space movement that you can do. So to go right. across okay. spaces, you teleport to cover, and then you can actually move and crawl. And literally at one oh, point, that's kind of cool. One point, I was on my knees crawling around this cover, shooting these robots blind. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> that's, great. <laughs> that's awesome. They can shoot the gun and disarm you too, so you have to be a little careful with it. But oh, that's so cool. So fucking good. Um, if you ever get a chance, it's free. If you have a Vive or VR or Oculus, pick it up. It's fucking awesome. If you don't and your friend does, tell him you're going to give him a six pack of beer, enjoy yourselves, have play that a little bit. Fucking awesome. <laughs> you need to play this. So Sounds good. awesome. Josh. I'm going to have to go to my friend's house. Hello. What have you been Hi. playing? 
Oh man. So I've been playing a lot of Rocket League for sure. Um just got the new uh Mantis car, which is a nightmare to get right now. Um you have to get uh you know, you have to get this new car out of these crates, which is uh sucky. I'm not, <laughs> so, yeah, like, I'm not sure I hundred so, percent agree with that decision to put I, new cars in the crates. Absolutely do not. I don't mind like you know all the vanity stuff, but yeah. any cars, I, I don't, I don't see the reason to put them in crates. Especially, yeah. or, or I may just be bitter because it's the only one I've actually wanted. Yeah. <laughs> <That could laughs> the more good out. thing is you can get that same exact hit box somewhere else, so it's not like it's a unique hit box yeah. that you have to get through the crates. Yeah, but then True. I don't get to wear my wee beers, <laughs> which <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, no. I can't wear it. Oh. Yeah, I need to look. I need to look amazing. Plus, Rocket League is. 70% fashion and 30% game. It's true. They don't call it fashion. They're a fashion league for nothing. Where's the flaming? I mean, I thought it was like 29% flaming, 1% game. No way, dude. It's no. like 90% fashion. Notice how the percentage is going up as we speak. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's because the items are There's more and more and more items. Yeah, I think there's like uh, almost 500 just rims. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. That many? Yeah. Uh, oh, if you wow. include all the different colors, right? Oh, that's know, true. I, yeah, I have my uh, my spreadsheet right here. Oh, um, yeah, <laughs> uh, there is currently four hundred and eighty three possible rims, including the colors, which is quite a lot. I've I, I have three hundred and forty five of them, so I'm. <laughs> it's How many a do lot. you have? Oh, nothing. Did I say something? <laughs> <laughs> say yeah. that again. Uh, three hundred and forty five. Damn. Yeah, that's impressive. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a lot. Um, <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So I got that. That's been a, that's been really good. Um, that um, played some. Uh, we have board game Mondays. We played some more Overcooked, which was amazing. And we actually got our stream to work finally on the PlayStation. So if you yeah, uh, watch some of that. Right, yeah. You can hear my friend throwing the controller because I was trolling him <laughs> in the background. He was, he was not happy. Because in, in Overcooked, uh, I don't know if anyone's played it. I'm sure some people have. but It's essentially, serious it's, business. Yeah, it's a cooking game. You're a short order cook and you're trying to put together orders and fulfill them in a time in a lot of time. Right? It's great. But uh, you can dash in it. That's like a, a command they don't tell you. <laughs> you, know, one of those. you can dash around, but you, when you dash, you like run into your your friends, and when you run into your friends, you can like knock them off the off of the uh, like platforms or just push them around. Mm-hmm. And what I did at the start of the game is I is I pushed him into the corner, like right at the start of the round. I pushed him in the corner and pinned him there so he couldn't move, and he got heck of mad. And then the yeah. controller, which <laughs> happens to be our Rocket League controller, so I'm like oh. really kind of been out of oh. that. <laughs> My, mine's messing up on me too. I dropped it in the the cable input. I don't know if it's the controller uh, cable input or if it's just the cables kind of busted now. But if it's not just right in the port, it'll disconnect for a second, and I'll get very mad trying to do something in the game, and then my controls just stop working for like a second or two uh, <laughs> at very inopportune worst. times, obviously. You guys got to take the... better care of your controllers. I, oh, sometimes man. it falls off the desk. I can't help it. <laughs> right. Sometimes it I'm just not... happens to fall off on no, its own. I'm not a, no, no, I'm not nothing a rager to do with me. I it just falls off. I've never, I've <laughs> never just, thrown a controller out of rage before. It just falls with force. I have. I mean, <laughs> have you ever played skate? On, <laughs> have you ever played skate in like hardcore mode? <laughs> no, I've played skate for like a couple hours on the have fun and like see how much damage you can do to the guy. Oh, oh that man, it's a awesome. burnout mode. <laughs> no, no, a skate on like I played Dark Souls, and Dark Souls is really hard. But if you play skate on like the hardcore mode on Skate Three, where they don't, um, you know, like Tony Hawk will like lock you to handrails and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, on hardcore mode, it doesn't lock you, so you actually have to physically get there, and then you also have to physically orient your board. And so when you when you do like the the beginning levels, it's okay, but like. Once you start trying to get that hundred percent, like going for like the the hardcore objectives, they're having you do really, really technical things on really small areas, and it's just impossible. I just absolutely raged at that game. <laughs> I don't think I threw through my controller once for Dark Souls, but I absolutely did for Skate Three Hardcore mode. <laughs> <laughs> I've never intentionally thrown a controller. Yeah, so I'm the kind well, of guy that'll just shake my hand furiously holding the controller. There may have been right. one time when it happened to slip out on the downward motion <laughs> and bounced. Yeah. 
Do you do that? Do you do like that rage flex? Or like, oh, oh, yeah. Just test that structural integrity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, if, <laughs> yeah. if it survives this, it'll survive my child. Like, if there was yeah. little, little controllers, I probably would have crushed a few, especially during Halo. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. Oh, man. Yeah, well, the controllers are pretty solid. I don't think I've ever twisted one in half. That's for sure. What, controllers are getting expensive now. I can't afford to rage throw one anymore. Yeah, that's they're ridiculous. Yeah, they're like 60 bucks a pop. Oh, yeah. no, that, that's just, that just can't do it. But some <laughs> games you absolutely need a controller for. Like, I, yeah. like there's certain games, like, I have a controller. I didn't used to. Like, I used to be really into FPSs. And, um, like, I just don't play games, certain games without a controller. Like, mm-hmm. for instance, um, like any racing games, I can't play without a controller. It's just not, I, I just, yeah, well, I don't, yeah. like, you have a steering wheel or you have a controller. There's like, no, there's no other right. option. I was actually nobody, gonna ask you. Have nobody you ever... plays for, go, go ahead. ahead. Nobody plays like Grand or uh, Gran Turismo or like Forza or something with a keyboard. Like, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> right. Oh, no, no, that, that's, that's insane. But have you ever played with the wheel? With a wheel, like uh, racing games with the, the wheel and pedals. It's amazing. I have one. When I was a little kid, I did. I don't like I it. I have one attached to my desk. You don't like it? I don't like it. It really feels why? so much different. I'm so, okay, so I'm used to playing with a Race controller. The VR. I'm the kind of guy that drifts and might tap the wall a little bit to get going. So I play racing games like an arcade. Oh, the right. The only okay. racing game I can do with a wheel and pedal is if I go to an arcade and play Daytona. It's the only time oh, okay. it works for me. I am great. terrible at those arcade games with the wheel. I'm oh, so it's bad. It's super fun, though. I mean, cause especially if you're playing like a, a, an arcade game, for it especially, because then you can just like, like uh, what's a good one, a good arcade one, like Need, Need for Shift speed. or something. If you're, if you're coming at like corners, you can just go like, you just pop it, you like downshift, like, bum, bum, and then you just like, you just whip the <laughs> steering yeah. wheel and you're just taking that corner sideways. Oh man, nothing feels better than that. That's amazing. But uh, like, for instance, like, uh, but going back to controllers in general, like, I didn't used to always, now I always have a controller mm-hmm. connected, connected up because, like, uh, like, well, here, here, I'll give you an example of a situation where, uh, so my wife was playing, um, Shadow of Mordor and she absolutely hated it. It's a really, really popular title. Everyone loves it. Yeah, a lot game. of people, yeah, I've not heard a lot of bad things about that. No, game. I haven't I heard anything. That game. But, she played it on keyboard and mouse. She said the controls oh. were impossible to understand. She yeah. could not like, she like, there's so many different things all over the place. I, and she's like, this, I can't do. Uh-huh. Right. And I'm like, well, most people that were playing shadow more play with the controller. You yeah. Try it again with the controller. And so, so that kind of like got me thinking like, you know, what, what games have you guys played really? Like, like that, do you have any, any other games that you played that are just, you just cannot do. Um, I tend to a- any games that you can play equally with both. I'll try both and see which I like more. Right. But I- I've noticed a lot of games will like just straight up tell you as you start the game before you get to the main menu. Hey, this game is optimized to be played with a controller. Please connect one and play like Super Meat Boy. Um, Titan Souls right. actually. I I, lo- I when I loaded up Titan Souls, it said, "Hey, this game is kind of meant for a controller. You should." you know, maybe try to use one for this. Right. You know, games like that. Absolutely. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to try to play it with a keyboard. Um, if, right. if I bought dark souls to play for the first time on PC, I wouldn't even try keyboard and mouse. I would just hook the controller in. I mean, right, some, games, absolutely. some games absolutely are just meant for that. Yeah. I, yeah. I've always, um, one game that I like with a controller right now is elite dangerous. Hmm. Mm, really because um i do it in vr that said my buddy did what i've kind of thought would be awesome he's done the whole throttle stick joystick thing for it in vr oh he went all in huh Mm -hmm. so i mean there's just certain ways that games yes you may be able to play them a certain way sometimes you just can't but there's definitely like you were saying there is ways a game is better to play yeah a a flight stick on a game like that especially in vr (laughs) oh my god I've gotten to the point where I almost every PC game I have that can be played with a controller, I will play. I will prefer the controller over the keyboard on just about every game except for first person shooters. Right. Yeah. I'll always, it, it, first person shooter, always keyboard and mouse. But every other game that I've played recently on Steam that isn't a first person shooter or like survival horror or whatever, I've played with keyboard. 
Right. Or no, yeah. I'm sorry. What's controller? Controller. Isaac, right. I am keyboard. Isaac, controller. Uh, Enter the Gungeon, controller. Um, obviously, Rocket League, controller. I don't feel Isaac is tight enough with the controller unless you have a really, really? nice D pad to use. See, really? I felt, I don't, I I felt like, it was nicer because you can actually move smaller amounts. I don't like hmm. joystick you, directions. Not- I like pure cardinal up, down, left, right. Really? Oh, okay. That's hmm, interesting. interesting. Yeah. For a bullet uh, hell game, uh, that surprises me because you get more control with uh, with the stick. Right. I yeah, I can, like, I can see that too. You get more freedom of motion. I feel you lose mm-hmm. precision though. And I prefer precision. I can like, see When I, can, I say I can down, I know yeah. I'm going exactly down. I may not right. accidentally hit to the left or to the right some. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, and diagonal, I guess you could, you know, for sure, that's exactly 45 degrees diagonal. Yes. It's exactly what you're intending. Which actually, okay. for Isaac, there's a little trick yeah. uh, <laughs> where there's spikes on the floor sometimes, and sometimes they're like checkerboarded or whatever. And mm-hmm. there's a lot of situations where it's like, oh, okay, well, there's this item inside these spikes. Do I sacrifice my health by running over the spikes to get that item? But there's actually a little trick you could do is if you if you weasel your way, you know, through the corner between the corner boundary of two spike blocks, just perfectly 45 degrees up, you'll bypass the spikes and not get hurt. Right. Hmm. That's super interesting. So in that then that situation keyboard is objectively better. You can go Crazy. that pure forty five. If you line it up right, you can mm-hmm. literally run straight through. Huh. That's that's yeah. pretty crazy. That sounds like a speedrunner tactic right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean I swap out for uh games like Grand Theft Auto. Like I have oh, my, yeah. I, I have my controller hooked up ready to go, but I'm you know, keyboard and mouse and as soon as I get in the car I pick up my controller and I'm driving. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, it's yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I can play those either way. Especially, uh-huh. I used to only be key or a mouse or not a controller with it. But right. because of Saints Row, I adapted oh. the keyboard on them. Oh, I, I never love played Saints Row. Saints Row on console. Oh, okay. Oh, that's yeah, true. I, yeah. I always like on those ones. If I get in a car in pretty much any game, I want to be on a controller because I really like racing games. I really like driving games. Mm-hmm. So. um so I, I like to have that feel, that same feel back. You know, it might come down to just what I'm used to, what I really like. But yeah, I, uh, like that, the hack and slashy. But like, what I'm starting to realize is like so when it, the ones that absolutely have to, like, th- there's there's the ones that are like kind of back and forth where you have like, okay, well, yeah, yeah, I can see pros for this, and I can see pros for this. But the ones <laughs> that feel like you absolutely have to are the ones that have a lot of control and you have to be really organic with it. Like uh, something for like Dark Souls, for instance, like you have all of these things that you can do, but it's faster and more effective to do it uh, when it's all right there, you know, right here in one little spot. Multiple, like you can reach everything. Yes. Multiple button See, presses at the same time kind of thing. Right. Exactly. Yeah. There's a few things like you could do when you got really deep into Dark Souls, especially like early stages, Dark Souls, uh, Dark Souls one, mm-hmm. like you used to be able to do the weapon switch and that was really cool. So like what you could do is, uh, I think it's a roll. And as you're rolling, you do your strong attack and then you swap out the weapon. Like you go to your menu and you mm-hmm. select the weapon and you swap your weapon while you're doing that. And you can do that attack with that weapon. So oh, okay. you can have like a scimitar where it has like a really flashy, like hundred hit combo thing. Uh-huh. Um, but you could do it with the great club. Oh, wow. So you're dealing like stupid damage, but you're just like, you, so you just lag switch your, uh, your weapon in and you're just like flicking around oh, this wow. giant great club, just <laughs> wrecking people's faces. That's out. so cheap. Yes, it's it is. cheap, but it is so hard to do. Yeah. It is really, really hard to do, and it, it's very rare that you get someone that can actually pull it off. When they pull it mm-hmm. off on you, you're just like, tip of the hat, man. You won that yeah. round. Well done. Also, no, <laughs> for those of you with the 72 PC drinking game, drink. Dark Souls, <laughs> yeah. No, but um, it, it's interesting when you say that anything, any games that have a lot of control, because everything is right there on your controller, Um. I could see that for sure because on keyboard you have so many more keys and they're all close together on a big right. flat surface. You know, it's it's easy to to miss a key or hit the wrong key because there's a bunch right right next to it. You know, if you mm-hmm. fat finger it or whatever. But also, keyboard has a lot more keys. You're not going to run right. out of keys for controls. Think of a game like Arma Three, for example. 
Right. There are so many fine controls because it's kind of more of a simulation kind of game instead of an right. arcade shooter. So mm. you've got like, you don't just have prone crouch and stand. You've got like hunch over, slightly crouch, full crouch, you know, prone, uh, even more prone than regular prone, hands and knees, whatever. I don't know how many there are, but there's like five or six and there's all these controls for that and different controls for you know, looking a certain way while you're running a different way and all kinds right. of stuff. You, would, right. you would not be able to do all that on the controller. Same with it's games like WoW. Yeah, right. that's skills. the big one. That's the yeah. one I would drop for yeah. sure. Uh, you have, I mean, you have your whole spread there. People even mm-hmm. add extra keys to their keyboard for that. Yeah. And there's special yeah. controllers that have right. extra keys on your yeah. mouse. So like, yeah. like the, the keyboard just wasn't enough. We need right. more keys. Like the running with mouth, the dude. nine buttons, the nine thumb buttons on the side. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Where if you go to press one, you're actually pressing four of them at once. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, there's I also think, um, RTS, I think, is another big yeah. one for computer, where there's only yeah. been one good adaptation. Yeah. There are two good adaptations I've ever played for console. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tom Clancy's End War, which used a, yeah. a, a way a ahead of, of its time voice control, yeah. which was awesome. Yeah, definitely. And then but without Halo the voice Wars. control, that would have been rough. It would have been rough, but it's doable because it was a slower pace. Mm-hmm. But something like StarCraft, when they tried yeah, that on the 64, was fucking dreadful. <laughs> you just couldn't right, do it. Yeah, was bad. Uh, I and I, but yeah. I think but with RTSs and speci- specifically, it's not necessarily the keyboard. It's mostly the mouse. Yes. Right. Uh, yeah, I think I well, think that's exactly it. Well, I, when also, you start getting into... Mic- micromanagement of squads is definitely a keyboard thing. Control one, yeah. control two, control three, re- reassign one to three. And yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, I guess that's true. Hot key locations on the map to quickly jump and stuff like that. Yeah. Right. It's just all With in the, all, I mean, our RTSs are micromanagement when you get really good, and you just can't do that kind of control on a controller. That's right. true. Absolutely true. I think most of the games that really call for a controller that work best are the games that need the analog put, the, the gradual... You know, it's not all zero or one. It's, you know, anything in between zero and a hundred or whatever. Games like Rocket League. Um, right. Anything where you need that, that, that more control from the analog sticks, I think, is really the only games that are objectively better with the controller. Well, because you're... mostly it's, it boils down to preference for the most of it. The same can also uh, be said with the joystick, though, because of uh, fighting games. Right. Right. Games, you I mean, want that joystick, as... like Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter. You don't want to play those on mouse and keyboard. Well, keyboard, because there would be no mouse. Right. Well, I mean, that's. I think that's really what it comes down to is like, is you know, rapid button firing versus like really precise clicks and motion. You know what I mean? Um, like, there's a separate thing for micromanagement uh, when you get to like RTSs. Like, and th- that's where the keyboard is. You know is what you're trying to find but mm-hmm. when you're getting into like you know clicking and 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 trying to hit a point it's going to be a mouse every time yeah. they're, they're designed to to hit those points and and move really quickly between point to point to point like a shooter for right. instance you know um it's really just navigating to an icon and clicking on it that icon being someone's head <laughs> right yeah. and whoever, <laughs> can do, whoever can get to that point faster wins right that's that's what that is um but when you come down to something like a Dark Souls or a Rocket League, for instance, you have... There you go. You drink twice. Um, <laughs> you, <laughs> we're trying to get you, Tom Trash to listen. You have that... Um, you, you're not so much worried about that, but more uh, finesse touches, right? You're, you're just doing light touches and not necessarily trying to get to a point, snap to it, and click it, right? Mm-hmm. This is like... Uh, like for Dark Souls, for instance, if you were trying to go to an, a, a certain angle to try to like roll back stab someone, you would want to do that. I mean, that's that's a slimy move, but you get the idea. But for like <laughs> racing, for instance, you have you know you have variable throttle, you have your mm-hmm. steering that you just want to like kind of you know just right. just get yeah. just get right really precise. For Rocket League, you have the aerials. You know, you want to make sure that you're coming in at just the right spot, and maybe you're just going to tap it, tap it, tap it, and then you're in. So it's more yeah. organic in that way. That's why I feel. Controllers, especially, are absolutely for more organic feeling things. Like a Batman Arkham Asylum would be a great candidate for that because it's supposed to feel more organic mm-hmm. than it's supposed to feel very, you know, competitive and 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 dialed. If that makes sense. 
Yeah, I think right. analog inputs are a really good call out because that's something computers just can't do. The closest thing to right. analog is mouse movement. Mm-hmm. Right. And I mean, that was what was kind of shocking about the Wii U saying that the, or not Wii U, holy crap, the Switch saying that the right. um, Joy Cons were going to be digital. Hmm. I mean, I that's know. just such a kill. The, the pro's analog, but it seems really weird to have at this day and age, if you're a console, why would you want digital triggers? Granted, these triggers right. are more like right. buttons, but still. Mm-hmm. Right, especially with some, with a racing game where you want, the, and they have a lot of them, a lot of yeah. things like that where you're going to want to, you know, feather that brake, feather that throttle, mm-hmm. you know, you're going to want you're you're going to want that that the only, nice. The only thing I will say is their racing games, none of them are super serious. They're all arcadey. Right. That's, That's the true. only thing good for them, like F Zero Wag or F Zero Mario Kart. That kind of stuff's really just like. Go or break, or your boost is going to be your fine tuned control. Mm-hmm. Nice. Um, the new. Oh, go ahead. Um, I was going to see if we could backtrack a moment when you were talking about fighting games. How the, it makes more sense to use a joystick. You don't really want keyboard controls for that. But I've never really been into the fighting games. So why is that the case? Because it would seem to me that if you have these hard inputs, it would be easier to do, you know, combos and things like that because you've got these. You know, specific. It's like oh, it would almost be like typing at that point. So for me, um, I grew up playing, learning fighting games on a Sega. I mm-hmm. was a Mortal Kombat kid all the way through. Mm-hmm. Um, to me, I found there's moves where you have to sweep the directions. You have to go mm. oh back, back diagonal, down, down forward diagonal, forward, and you can do that on the D pad. But the Sega had it nice because they had more of a divoted in controller where you can just kind of roll. And a joystick's right. nice because you literally just roll, do a half circle. So you actually right. start doing like um, motions rather than just directions. Okay. Right. I see. Which is why people it, love the joystick, like fi- actual fighting sticks. Gotcha. Right. Actually, that, that makes a lot more sense. I, for some reason, I was always thinking, I, I wasn't taking into account the diagonal. Uh, You're thinking motions. precision I was thinking, back. Oh, down, 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 right, left, right. A or whatever and stuff right, like that. Yeah. That would be so much easier with like a D pad or a or a keyboard, but yeah, I guess that makes more sense with the sweeping motions. Oh yeah, I fucked up a ton of fatalities because of that stuff. Yeah. But for the actual <laughs> fighting, it's really nice. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm a fighting game noob, but I'm glad I asked. Thank you for clarifying. It yeah. would be nice if they kept the statistics showing how many fatalities you failed. Oh God! <laughs> like you high punch Katana in the face rather than rip her spine out. Basically. Like how many times have I failed this move in particular? Like slap someone or just the time ran out. You're like, oh yeah, oh, yeah left. Oh God! And the person just I go, damn it! Like it's been three hours. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, as a kid, I had a book giving me all the combos, all the moves, all the fatalities. I think up until I was like 13, I managed to pull off 10, if that. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I could the, see that. The old fatalities were brutal. It was like a fucking 12-button press combination to be able to do it, and you had to be standing in the just right spot. If you were too far forward, yeah. it wouldn't work. Too far back, it wouldn't work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that's not even taking into account like, an actual professional fighting game guy. Like, yeah. A guy that, that has to study these and make sure he nails all of those inputs precisely or he loses like a second like a millisecond window he's mm-hmm. done it's yeah. over the and he recognizes when monsters. he's in far distance versus sweep distance versus close distance based on how that person's jumping it's right like, how the fuck yeah those right, people are yeah. absolute wizards i don't i could, <laughs> yeah, I could that, never get that hardcore into anything as much as i've played rocket league i can't it's just that is insane to me and right. honestly, yeah i mean i don't like i have a friend it. i have a friend that got really into fighting games and he and he sat there every day in the trainer checking his spacing writing down the combos if anything strange happened or anomaly he has all of his notes he's like blah 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 he said he spent more time in the trainer than he ever did actually <laughs> fighting it yeah i don't doubt it that's absurd <laughs> that's insane right yeah, that's crazy what was that street Christ. fighter uh yeah well he played that a lot but he's he, the one he's currently in i think he's ranked pretty high in like fourth in the world uh, blaze blue mm. i am not what? familiar with that yeah it's it's essentially kind of like a like a street fighter i would say something along those lines but yeah. then again someone might be like oh oh because the fighting oh, game, God. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> <That> <laughs> fighting game can be 
to the That's superior right. street fighter. <laughs> so I was like calling anyone... a Chevette a fucking Monte Carlo. Wow, that right? Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely screwed. <laughs> All credibility is in the toilet now, but you get the idea. It's one of the, it's kind of like that, not yeah. like a uh, yeah. So it has like a lot of buttons. Yeah, I was always more of a Tekken guy myself. After I grew up, <laughs> I like those combo flows a lot better. But mm-hmm. either way, <laughs> was there anything else you've been playing, Josh? Uh, yeah, so I, I, I played a lot of Overcooked, but a lot of what we play is board games. We play a lot of board games over here. We have board game Mondays, and so we're playing one called, I think, uh, well, one we, we played last time was uh, King of Tokyo, which is fantastic. Are you guys familiar with any of these board games? No. no. Okay, King of Tokyo is great. You play a monster, you're in the city, and you're fighting essentially the other monsters. So e- each player is a monster, and then you fight whoever's in the city and the city fights everyone else. Oh. So, yes. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's really, really good. Um, how that all plays out. We're thinking of maybe we can, uh, show how that happens, but it's quite good. But anyway, that's pretty much it for me. Hmm. As far as the games I've been playing. Okay. Yeah. I haven't done much board gaming. Um, since, well, I'm out here now. I don't do any, but, <laughs> all right well yep. with that i think we have a little bit of news we can get into yeah let's uh, there's see. actually been some really interesting stuff so um last year um io interactive released the newest hitman game everyone was kind of upset when it was announced because it was hey this is going to be episodic we're going to release new stuff and update it blah de, blah and everyone has a bad taste in their mouth because of episodic this thing comes out, it fucking nails it out of the park. It's fantastic. Everyone loves this game. Well, mm. Square Enix decides, you know what? You didn't hit the marks we want. They're dropping IO Interactive. Oh, so, no. And after they've already started to invest money into Season 2 material. Wow, vicious. <laughs> the, the kicker on it all, it's really weird. Hitman, super big IP. I mean, in the yeah. gaming industry, it's one, right. of the mo- one of the well-known ones. Mm-hmm. Right, Enix is letting the IP walk with them. Wow, that's insane. They're Especially not- about how much hype the last one got. Yeah, right. And all, and the great thing for IO Interactive, anyone that picks them up, they'll have the the they'll have the Hitman franchise. On yes, the and actually, they'll have the whole engine they made for Hitman and be able to automatically start bringing in money for Episode Two. Mm-hmm. This is really good for uh, really both parties um not necessarily square enix that's their own personal thing but io interactive still has the ip so they've got something that can attract other publishers yes that that's the key you know they're not they're gonna have to find some funding otherwise they might have to stop development on whatever they're working on right now but they have that ip to to market themselves to to get that funding yeah it's it's interesting, especially it's just really good. I think in my mind for a development company to be able to come up and work with an IP and to have that feeling that if things go bad, my publisher is going to let me keep this IP. Yeah. Right. For instance, Bungie, there would be no destiny if Microsoft did not maintain Halo. Bun- Let's true. not kid ourselves. Bungie would not have left that franchise. They right. would have kept mm-hmm. making Halos if Microsoft let them walk with that IP. Yeah, right. That's true. Absolutely. So, I mean, this so did, is huge. Yeah. Did either of you guys play much of the Hitman games? No. I, well, I used to play the old... I played the older ones. I didn't get into the ones after they drifted into like the later consoles. Mm-hmm. So I played a lot of the PlayStation 2 one, and then... Okay. Have you played a lot of them? Have you checked them out? Not much. I had hit. I had Hitman Two on PlayStation Two, and then I played a little bit of the other one that came out. I think it was for PS3. I can't remember, but I I, I haven't played much into them. I, it, it was they're actually pretty difficult. Right, they're really lot, really fun parts. You have to. <laughs> yeah, they're the really level. fun stealthy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're um, really fun stealthy games. I get really, really into stealthy yeah. games. Almost OCD of, about them. So it's, I, it's, I, yeah, it's they're cool bit. games. Though I like it because it's, there's not really much else that's like that out there. 
Right. Uh, one of the I podcasts mean, I listened to, um, Giant Beast Cast, they gave this their game of the year. Oh, year. really? Um, because and I've never played it, but just listening to them talk about it, it's this huge mm-hmm. sandbox where they're just like, here's your salute or here's what you got to do. Do it. Mm-hmm. That's and, almost not what I've heard about it, which is insane. Really? What I've heard about it is that there is, there is a normal way to do it. There's an easy, clearly defined route that you can do each hit. But there's mm-hmm. other weird things you can do outside. So, like, really, the main way to do it is like it's all set up for you. You could pretty much mm-hmm. walk this like really well paved trail. If you want to do anything else, you actually have to go out and do that separately and build it all up yourself, almost. Right. Um, so it's a little bit more of a pain in the ass to go the roundabout way. And uh, okay. that was that was a, a topic that someone brought up in the past. Was uh, is that okay when you're trying to? do something like that or would you take more of a uh a zero dawn approach and have all these traps and stuff at your disposal but like let you figure it out yeah it's hmm. yeah it's um something really interesting because i don't know if it's just the way they like going about it but they were explaining like they would just they may have just saw the path and said fuck it but, like they were right. doing really weird things like they're taking an axe and they're just chucking this axe at people to kill them and stuff like that. <laughs> and another, I think part of the appeal of those games is that you have that freedom of choice to right. determine how to go through the level. And as long as those clearly defined paved pathways, the right way to do each level, as long as that's not the only way to do it and that you can still improvise and you know make your own plans through each level, um, it, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing as long as it doesn't take away from that. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. It's basically giving the player the option. Like, how do you want to play it? Do you want to, for people who might think devising your own plans and doing this crazy stuff is too much, you know, and they just want to go through the game and experience each hit and maybe see the story or whatever, you know, you could take that easy route. But then the people who want to get all hardcore into it can still do the cool stuff. <laughs> Talking about hardcore into it, have you guys ever looked at Stealth Gamer BR? No. no. Stealth Gamer BR is fantastic. If you guys have not looked at Stealth Gamer BR, do yourself a fa- favor and actually watch those videos. He <laughs> does the most epic playthroughs of uh, of like Dishonored, uh, Fallout, uh, Far Cry. He does these really. He uses everything, all the different yeah. tools the developer has given him to to do these kills. He uses everything, and it is the most impressive playthroughs I've ever seen. That's awesome. It, it just take the time and, and, and do it. He's he's doing he's using all these powers and the physics of the game in order to really pull off these amazing things. And it just shows you how open these sort of games are. He does Hitman as well. So nice. so give him a go. Nice. Yeah, and one other thing I will call about Hitman that was good. It's gonna be gone now. But they had um what they call it, a roaming target or something like that, where randomly, like for a month, they would put some random person in the map and say, your new hit is this guy that's never been on the map before. Oh, oh that's cool. awesome. So it, an elusive target is what they called him. Okay. So, uh, that that's concept cool. is really I like cool. that. That's cool. That's really cool. Fresh. They were saying what yeah. you would do is you'd play the game for a couple weeks, get used to it, and then you'd wait for the next episode to launch or something else to happen, and then you're good. Hmm. Really, hmm. really interesting how they did it. I hope someone picks them up because I'd love to see this continue because I might yeah. buy into it because I've heard a lot of good things. Um, nice. Sounds awesome. Very nice. Outside of that, uh, BioWare, you guys hit on it last week. They were uh, revving down on the work for Mass Effect Andromeda. There's been a little more news. They're not just revving down on the work. They are cutting the team. Ooh, they are cutting heads that's... off of the team and going downsize on the crew. Wow. Ooh. So oh, that was bad for such a large scale sci-fi epic game. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Do you, do you know any reason why they made that decision um, or is it speculation at this point? Sales is the main assumption probably. Um, mm-hmm. So the one thing is this game in an interview prior, it was announced that this is, to be a one-off. This was not supposed to be a series. Mm. But mm, I think I part of what happened is, I mean, they say that, but in all honesty, if it sold well, it's going to be a fucking series. There's no doubt. Well, right? yeah. yeah. Um, with all the outcry and how bad it was, I think they realized how hard it was to do what they initially did in the first two. And the, mm-hmm. third, right. the third sold off the value of the first two. 
The newest right. one sold off the value of the franchise, and now your franchise has just about as many misses as hits. You're not right. going to get those numbers yeah. anymore. Right. right. Absolutely. Starting to lose that track record of amazing games. Absolutely. Know? I mean, it might be good for the team, though. Like, uh, you have this big, massive team, and you're trying to orchestrate them all into this big, massive epic. Maybe, mm-hmm. maybe scaling down it is a good option to scale down, bring the team tighter, focus on quality, and try to put out something smaller mm-hmm. that is way better than anything that you've done before. That's always something to think about as far as yeah. those, those sort of op- uh, sort of options. Or you could just make an Arcadia Corridor shooter and Mass Effect name on it and it'll hate you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, don't do <laughs> yeah, Maybe don't do that. That's true. Maybe don't do that. Uh, let's, go to, let's go with what you said. That sounds yeah, better. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wear Honestly, those colored glasses. I want those to happen. I would really just like to see it die. And I don't mean that in a mean way, but yeah. if something's yeah. great, sometimes not making a Let sequel or something to it yeah. is the best mm-hmm. thing to do. Like well, I'm worried about on. The Last of Us <laughs> because of that. The last right, one was perfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This it's a great sucks, standalone game. Yeah, exactly. You're gonna taint it if the next one sucks. I mean, well, you do have Neil Druckmann behind those ones, and he has put out up to you know all the Uncharted so far, and those are really good. On, yeah, on top of the yeah. you know, and he, and he painted the world, he illustrated the world, you know, illustrated the world out to us through you know all four, uh-huh. and. And, and they've been they've been all great. They've been all fantastic. Those are the only ones that I'll actually go out of my way to get and sit through. So, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that though. I mean, I hope we'll sequels. <laughs> I hope sequels keep happening for certain games um, mm-hmm. because when they drop off on some, I get I get needy. I really want another one for like. How about Skate Four? Come on, EA. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone wants it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've. It's just a. It's a pain to see good devs get out of work, but it's nice to see they might actually be putting it to bed. But that's true. uh, Another news: fractured butthole. Not sure if you guys are familiar. It's the new South Park game. That's the next one after Stick of Truth. (laughs) It has gotten pushed back yet again. At this point, it's been pushed back almost an entire year from its initial release date. Butthole. Yes, it's the sequel that's a, to that's, Stick of that's Truth. A great name. Yeah, yeah, that's a great name. <laughs> yeah. Um, the so, big reason they're saying it might have been pushed back is because Trey and them are actually involved heavily in the story writing. So that's right. a good oh, sign. That's okay. that's what happened last nice. time. Last yes. one with the Stick yeah. of Truth. They they were like, it needs to be perfect. It needs to be perfect. They're really in it. They had like all the, like they showed the script of all the different pieces of dialogue. Mm-hmm. It was insane, and they and they really put their heart and soul into it. And when the you can watch all the interviews about it. So I really hope they're taking this one and doing the exact same treatment to the next one. Well, I heard some of the interviews about the sick of truth and it's painful because Trey and them don't understand the video game industry. They're used to TV. Right. When they switch dialogue up, it's no big deal. Reanimate. Right. But they're switching yeah. up dialogue on a game and it's taking a lot of rework. It's not a one day turnaround. It's a week right. turnaround. Right, yeah. exactly, exactly. And th- that's exactly a lot of the stuff that they were talking about in those interviews was exactly that. And how, just the sheer volume was getting to them at one point. They're like, oh, we want to do this, and we want to do this, and we want to do this, but we can't do it all because it's literally impossible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think it was uh, Midway uh, was the initial publisher for this of uh, Stick of Truth. And it took so long, um, Midway ended up going bankrupt during this. Mm. Oh wow! So um, it's an interesting thing where had the game not been delayed so much, Midway's may not have went under, which would have been really, really interesting because then that means we never get Nether Realm, which means we never get the um, the DC fighting games, we never get the reboot of the Marvel franchise. All this shit happened because Trey and them don't know how to make video games. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, that, guys. We appreciate it. <laughs> no, it's great. No, it's great because it's midway on their or um, another realms on their own. It's doing really good stuff. Yeah, but That's either good. way, um, another really interesting news fact is the April sales numbers are in for the top video game sales. Uh, top, undoubtedly, Mario Kart Eight and Persona Five are one and two big single platform games. Um, it gets interesting when you get down to number six. Is once again Grand Theft Auto Five still 
one of the top selling games in the fucking world four years after release. What a monster of a game. This Absolutely. game is won't huge. Die. <laughs> it really just, just prop, props on them for this. Props, well, I mean, props, right now, not. right now it's currently sitting on third as far as the most viewers uh, mm. on Twitch. If you're, yeah. if if that's something interesting, there it's always up there, mm-hmm. uh, and that's contending with stuff like you know Overwatch, League of Legends, Counter Strike, and Battlegrounds. It's, it's outclassing Counter Strike right now <laughs> as that's far nuts. as most views, <laughs> and it's an old game. Yeah, know, in relatively it, right. Yeah, and there was uh, one other shocker. Um, number 10, the 10th most sold game this month, Call of Duty Black Ops 2. Hmm. Not 3, not um, Advanced, not Advanced Warfare or the newest one, but fucking Black Ops 2. Why? I don't get it. I think this might finally be a call the Call of Duty fr- uh, fans saying, listen, we, we appreciate the change. We don't like it. Maybe, yeah, maybe that's what they're feeling. They haven't been getting the numbers, and I think this is starting to show. So hopefully, um, I can't remember, who, uh, not Obsidian, but they knock, knock it out of the park with the WW2 one and actually get the franchise reworked. Yeah. Hmm. Hopefully, maybe. We'll maybe. see where they go from it. <laughs> I'd like to see another good Call of Duty game, though. I would. I, I don't hate Call of Duty. They were one of the first ones to force 60 FPS which is a great yeah. feeling. The first time yeah. you feel that and see that, you know, and you're like, oh yes, my God, right. this is different. Right. I, my first exposure to that was, uh, we was doing a LAN at, and we was playing CSGO and I had my shitty computer. Then I think it was Adam that just had a nice graphics card. I remember mm-hmm. seeing CSGO on your computer. I'm like, oh my God, this doesn't look <laughs> like the same game. <laughs> yeah, it changes everything. Yeah, Absolutely. absolutely. Now you see that 144, and then it changes it again. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so I just thought that was interesting. GTA 5 never dies. It's got the online community, as Tom said. It has an online community to rival an MMO right now. It's fucking insane. Yeah. And next on the list, we have a really interesting game. For those of you who like horror games and like history, this has got you covered. I don't really care about much about history, but I love horror games. <laughs> we have a World War One horror game. Ad infinitum. Ad infinitum. Infinitum. Infinite. Infinitum. 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 Adam, <laughs> you brought this one up to us. I think you would probably yeah. have a couple words you'd like to say on this one. Yeah. Well, there, there's not a lot of information about it right now, but I, I watched the trailer on it, and this thing looks creepy. First of all, it's in the Cry Engine, so it's beautiful very very high fidelity graphics it's, and it takes place in the trenches of world war one that sounds so, insane yeah was, yeah the, go ahead Eric. i was gonna say it's the cry engine's beautiful but this yeah. is grungy i mean this is very grungy grungy that's it's really it's cool. dark it's raining you're in these dirty trenches and there are some very supernatural things stalking you in these trenches uh, there's a clip of this hand going over the, the edge of the trench and it's got these really long fingers and sharp nails and it scrapes the side of the metal as it comes through and you, your guy freaks out and you're running through these trenches and then it showed another clip and he looks back and he sees this creature and this thing is like 15, 20 feet tall and it just, it's got like four legs and these long arms these claws and it stretches out and i don't know it looks crazy it, it looks reminds crazy. me of the first time you see i don't know if anyone's watched the show falling skies the first time you get to see the overlords from falling skies are these really tall thin aliens with the yeah. elongated bodies and just imagine mm-hmm. that with like these freddy cougar hands at the end of yeah. it it was just oh my god creepy right i'm wondering if it's just this one creature following you or bunch of things or if your guy's like hallucinating because we're in ptsd and all kinds of stuff i wonder i wonder how they tie in like a story to that i don't know i want if as long as they have trench rats i'm happy (laughs) (laughs) you you guys know about trench rats right trench rats those those are the scary okay they might not be it might not be real someone can Mm -hmm. cite my sources on this but uh, i was told um that so, you know, you have the, the, like where you run from one trench to the other, there's that whole 
dead man area, no right? Yeah. No yeah, man's land, exactly. So everyone's running from there to there, and sometimes they get trapped in like a, a hole where there's like a big explosion happen or whatever. Uh-huh. Um, and then, so there's corpses in there. People die in there, and what happens is these rats come in there and they eat the they eat the bodies. But uh, again, this is the part where I don't know if it's a hundred percent true. But uh, they said that um, that something about eating human flesh stopped them from like stop the. Uh, them from not growing so they just got bigger and bigger and bigger <laughs> and they became these like giant rats you know not like you know 40 story you know colossi yeah. but right you know, yeah there are all these giant rats eating people in these trenches and i'm like that sounds that so sounds cool. like a video game in itself <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> imagine like like going around a corner and then dealing with the trench i mean it's mm-hmm. it sounds more terrifying than trench foot i suppose yeah. <laughs> yeah. but no i'm excited for this game I, I really like seeing a new setting like this. It's a horror game, but it's not set in an insane asylum. You're not going through these right. gritty warehouses. It's not an old school. It's not a deserted town. It's it's the trenches of World War One. We've not seen something like this, and I'm really, really looking forward to it. That sounds, just, that sounds just, great. Yeah, I just hope it's not bad. I, I hope it's a as, lot I hope the trailer horror. isn't overwhelming. I don't play a lot of horror games, but I like that mm-hmm. this one is more of a suspense than a jump horror. Right. Potentially, yeah, like yeah. you're running through these tight corridors. You're not quite sure what's going to come across. So you know you're going to have some jump horrors, but it's also well, yeah. a lot of anxiety in it. And I like that. I love right. that. I, I yeah. love that. It's my favorite type of horror. Those are the ones I really enjoy playing for short periods of time and then never again. I <laughs> love those kinds of games. The ones that yeah. sit with you where you're just like, oh, uh, I was just not going to go outside for a few weeks. It'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If, so if you're cool. into horror at all, Frictional Games actually does a lot of blog posts on this. And Frictional Games is, of course, the developers of the Amnesia series. They did Soma, Amnesia, you know, and that. And they actually do a lot of blog posts on the design behind horror games and, you know, why they chose to make the, the protagonist um, defenseless, you know, how that adds to the horror experience, how pacing works, adding the story. There's all kinds of articles and stuff. It's definitely a good read if you're interested in the design aspect of horror games and what makes games scary. Uh, definitely give those a read. Hmm. Yeah, it, it's been interesting. I don't know if they have a release date, but uh, hopefully at E3, maybe some leaks or something like that will come out. We'll hear some more. Yeah. Um, another game that's coming out is a, another game from the creators of um, Rappa the Rappa. <laughs> and it's going to be another rhythm game. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, I can't remember what they're calling it, but it's going to involve some really, really, really cool shit. Um, you're going to be um, freestyling like you were in Rappa the Rappa, and you're going to mm-hmm. you know, okay. be rapping all cool and like, but someone's, it's going to be actual rap battle. Someone's going to say something to you, and you're going to have to figure out whether or not you're going to want to laugh at what they're saying, retort to what they're saying, insult them about something else, or just ignore it. Huh. So you're going to so have these like decision the trees while you're rapping. Interesting. Well, I don't. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's is good. it going to be something like um, like uh, Heavy Rain meets Parappa the Rappa? Because that that sounds like a like a clashing of trains. That sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, the then it that sucks. Is you're Jason, <laughs> Jason, you're going to have to be able to read fast and be able to think fast is the only problem I can see with that. Mm. Because mm-hmm. I mean, you're going to have to interpret, Hey, what this person just say to me, they're going to highlight keywords for you. They said to kind of simplify it. Okay. And then you need to decide, hopefully it's something where up is always laugh B or right is always counter and something like that. Right. Yeah. So it's not necessarily you have to read your options. You just know what you mm-hmm. want to kind of retort with. Yeah. Okay. And the game is called uh, Project Rap Rabbit. Yeah, there we go. Which I like that name. That's cool. But yeah. I never did play much of Parappa the Rapper, so I'm not really that familiar with this. But I'll definitely look into it. To go back to it, it doesn't age well. A lot of with yeah. the whole <laughs> no. display change where you now have latency where or the latency is removed yeah. and things are weird. Yeah. So yeah, I'm it, sure that makes a big difference. Didn't age overly well. Um, another game that is going to be released is Minecraft coming to the Switch. Nice. Oh, I saw that. Um, that is a game that goes everywhere, does everything, and will probably never really die because it will always be able to do something. 
Yeah, Minecraft has taken everything by storm. It is a huge success, so it it's only makes logical sense for as many platforms to try to jump onto that as, as possible. Everyone Definitely. talks about the whole um, indie wave and mm-hmm. how Braid and all them started it. Yeah. Everyone always forgets about Minecraft. It is probably, yeah. honestly, the most successful indie game of all time. I mean, yeah, it is probably, probably valued higher than any when it was sold. There are toys and grocery stores for it and stuff. I mean, yeah. it's everywhere. I mean, once they sold, they were the Microsoft was able to start pushing it out in all these different venues. I mean, even before mm-hmm. that, everyone knew what it was. Everyone. Yeah. Right. And the Switch console for it because it gets it mobile. And there's a mobile version for like Android and iPhone, but right. it's kind of clumsy controlling a first person crafting stuff building <laughs> yeah. crafting on a little screen like that with touchscreen controls but when you have a switch with the, the actual controls controls then it's a constant yeah that's it's awesome yeah i've never really played a lot of minecraft i was always a terraria guy but it's a good fucking game and i like seeing the switch library get bolstered because I like the switch it's a good console yeah um and one yeah. last little bit of news this one's interesting uh, a couple months ago, we hit on Blizzard wanting to make an official league for Overwatch. Mm-hmm. Not this every man for himself stuff that goes on in majority of major league sports, but an official, everyone gets contracts, teams are solidified, there is a complete season, there is no shifting mid-season kind of thing. So like an actual sports thing. Mm-hmm. Well, um, ESPN actually had an article on it, and it sounds like Blizzard is at odds with a lot of people trying to buy because they're asking for a shit ton. So Mm. what Blizzard is asking for now, it's finally came out. They're wanting every owner of a team to come down with $20 million to buy a franchise. With that, you see no profits until 2021. And that's only if Blizzard clears the amount of money that they decide that they need to clear. And then you get 25%. That is insanely risky. If you sell your team, you have to give 5% of that back to Blizzard, I think it was, of the selling price. Mm-hmm. What? So, I mean, Blizzard is, they're not just trying to ensure that their league is successful. They're trying to heavily monetize their league to where they make money out of it. And well, a lot of people smart. are starting to ask, <laughs> is this actually going to take off because of it? It's supposed to start right. third quarter this year. And uh-huh. there's only, as far as I've read, Robert Kraft, the owner of the New England Patriots, is the only guy who sounds willing to step forward for this. Yeah, and that, that's a big one. But if he's the only one, you're going to need more teams than that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think their demands are too high. I love what they're going for, mm-hmm. but not sharing profits till 2021. You're talking people throwing $20 million down. These are mm-hmm. businessmen. That's not an investment yeah. they want to make. That yeah. sounds god awful. Yeah, they might. Right. It's one of those things they might have set. They might have set their scope a little too high, and this is a concept that's uh, talked about a lot in video game development. You've got this scope for this project that's really cool. You know, you've got a crafting system and a crazy, you know, story that's dependent on decisions and all these systems and stuff. And then you get down to do it, and you realize how much work it is and how much time it takes. And you're like, okay, the scope is too high for what we want to do and when we want to have this done by. You just can't do it. You have to start cutting things or do this a different way. And I, I hope that this isn't going to happen with this because, you know, what they're trying to do for the Blizzard or the, the Overwatch League is really cool. It, it very much legitimizes esports and it's, it's, you know, kind of bridging that gap between esports and regular sports. And if they're trying to do too much and nobody else is on board with them, then it's just going to crash. I mean, going into it, though, you have to also know this is Blizzard. It's a Blizzard's giant, right? They, yeah. They yeah. know business. You know, they're mm-hmm. still around. You know, they're pushing what they have and, and mm-hmm. they keep going. So they and they've been doing esports longer than a lot of people. So but, they know how they know how to make it happen. But so the like big this. question is, 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 well, what what's uh, what are they really offering? A lot of things that they're saying are rumors and some of them are facts Mm -hmm. and they're not actually releasing the information publicly to people yet about how the ecosystem is going to be broken down and how people are making their money in some way. So I said a lot of things out there 
are rumors, but they haven't really, I, I don't know what's a rumor and what's a fact. Right. So I'm really interested to find out how all of that plays out because you have a lot of really big organiza- organizations like, you know, cloud nine, you have flip side tactics, you have, you know, I buy power, all those people that are just giants, you know, they have all sorts of stuff going on mm-hmm. as far as this stuff, uh, as far as uh, esports are concerned. So I'd like to see what they're really offering these guys. Cause it's business to business at that point. So you know, they, they, no one's going to even hear them out. If it doesn't have something reasonable. I don't see this attracting your normal esports owners because of the fact that this is static. This is something, mm-hmm. this is new to them. So all current esports are very loose. There is no governing body that says when you set your roster, your roster must remain the same from this point to this point to this point. The closest right. thing to it right now is Valve with the Dota since they set up the four key Dota tournaments. That's the closest there is. What right. Blizzard is doing is literally setting up an NFL for um, Overwatch. Crazy. Here, and Yeah, it's nuts. The only thing is, like you said, to us, they haven't disclosed any of the information on how the people are actually going to get paid. But the fact right. remains, you're asking for a $20 million investment for something that you're saying you won't see a dime from for four years, and that's only if we make our share. Mm-hmm. Right. It'll never work. That's crazy. That's crazy. We'll see. We'll see. Again, mm-hmm. I, I when you think about someone like Blizzard, you have to think that there's something that they, they're not going to just randomly come up with some sort of plan where like, Hey, everybody let's do $20 million. Like that sounds yeah. like a good number. You know, there's, <laughs> there, there has to be, even if they are asking that and that's, uh-huh. uh, which it sounds like they are. And yeah. it's that steep. There has to be something behind it that they're telling them that they're not telling us for it to even yeah. be considered as a possibility for their, you know, for their economics, people to be like, yeah, this is going to work out. This is going to be great. Let's release that concept. <laughs> you know? pro- yeah. It's probably to get the right sort of, uh, the right people involved. If they're setting right. the price high, they're saying, okay, we need a giant company with a lot of capital that can take this risk. That's not going right, to get paid right. in four years, but we need a company that's big enough that that's not going to be too big of a risk. Yes. So right. they don't want this to fold. Yeah, absolutely. They don't want these small companies with these small teams. They want these big, giant companies with money they can throw everywhere and uh, really legitimize everything. The only thing I can think of is this $20 million from, I can't remember the number of teams, but it's probably going to consist of salary, Mm -hmm. venues, travel, and per diem. Right. It's going to, it's got, um, it has to. If it doesn't consist of those, then this money they're asking for is just absurd. (laughs) <laughs> right. Uh, I'm I'm sure there's something. I, I can't wait for them to finally release yeah. what they're actually expecting. Unless mm-hmm. they're just like, you know, tossing out big numbers to get people coming to get people attracted. But that's that seems kind of amateurish, a little a little hacky for yeah. someone like Blizzard, you well, know. The only thing I'll say is Blizzard's never dealt with this. All esports right. around Blizzard games are through like other companies, not Blizzard themselves. Oh, right. Okay. Still interested. Still interesting. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see for sure. I'll be interested. Definitely. For sure. Well, I think that's pretty much a wrap for what we got this week. Either you two got something else you want to throw in there before we get out of here? No, that pretty um, much sums it up. We got some follows during the stream. Can we shout those out? Oh, yeah, of let's, course. Let's, let's do some yeah. shout outs here. We got uh, Van R. Oh. It's hard to read here, but Vanar, we know Vanar. Thanks for following. Yeah, thanks for following, Bi- Vanar. Bitch, bitch Kitty and Flux RO. Oh, so nice. Flux. If, you're, Flux. if you're still listening, thanks. Bitch Kitty, awesome name, by the way. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> and, nice. Uh, thanks. I, I think Obamarific is uh, new for today as well, isn't he? Uh, it says 19 hours ago. So. Oh, okay. Well, it's thank not you during guys the cast. Up. I'll listen to you then. <laughs> <laughs> yes. My, my apologies on that. But yes. Thanks thank anyway, you. guy. <laughs> thank <laughs> you all for the follows. We appreciate it and need it. But also, with that, if you would like to add some content to our show, have us talk about something you want to hear or anything of that nature, you could always tweet at us at our Twitter at, at 72 PC podcast.com or Oh my God at 72 PC podcast on Twitter, not a dot com. That'd be really kind of weird. Um, <laughs> 
if you're listening live and you would like to go see any of our old shows or some of the reviews we have up, we're trying to add more content, but we're really lazy bastards and we're being really <laughs> slow about it. But you can catch our YouTube channel at 72 Pin Connector. Um, we do have a website. It's just pretty much a meta of all of our podcasts. You can stream from it, all that fun stuff at 72pinconnector.com. And I think that's all we got for you this week. So, mm-hmm. until next week, game on. Game See on. you, everyone.